All right, so that's just a little bit of the interchange uh, from that SCOPA meeting between Becky Khadebe and Andre Dereta. Becky Khadebe, ANC MP, joins me now. Uh, Mr. Khadebe, thank you so much. You know, I, I thoroughly enjoyed watching you uh, grilling Andre Dereta because you refused to let him not answer the question. I mean, ultimately, you didn't get the name out of him, but you tried every which way to get him to name names. You even said to him, look, you can take the oath and then you will get parliamentary legal protection from whatever you say. He still was incredibly reluctant. Um, do you feel that you really got anything from today's interaction? Um, even to you and the viewers at home, no, not at all. Um, you see, there's this narrative that um, we as politicians, we tend to protect one another and we're sweeping corruption under the carpet. And when we're when there were these allegations of a serious nature, um, we wanted to display to the public and to those that are um, putting their trust on us to deal with issues of corruption decisively. Now, Mr. Dredd had an opportunity uh, to assist us in fulfilling our oversight and accountability mandate to ensure that he divulged the name of the responsible minister who are allegedly uh, involved in enriching and enabling an environment where uh, uh, corrupt individuals are going to steal from the public purse. We are currently sitting at stage six shedding. Uh, people are suffering. Yet when we ask relevant questions mm. in order for us to deal decisively with this matter, we are taken from pillar to post. So it was a very painful exercise for us to endure for almost three hours, trying so hard to be patient and to ask a relevant question. We even afforded him protection under the Powers and Privilege Act for him to take a son affidavit on oath for, for us to be able to get the information mm. we want and such information that he would have divulged to us wouldn't have been used against him in any court of law as per the yeah. Powers and Privileges uh, Act. And, and you know but that's he did yeah. not accede to that yeah. call. He did not indeed. Um, obviously, that would give him legal protection. But the reality is, um, whistleblowers, if that's what he is, in South Africa, get killed far too frequently. And you may have been able to offer him legal protection, but actual physical protection for him and his family would be another thing entirely. Do you have any sympathy for him? Perhaps, you know, this is a man who says that there's been an attempt on his life already. Do you perhaps have sympathy for his position? Most definitely, we do have sympathy. Hence, when we realize that we are not going anywhere with this, uh, we then resolve as a committee to say those individuals that have been mentioned and the law enforcement agencies that are responsible for this case, um, it will then be incumbent upon us to pursue them to get clarity as to how far is the case. We are not in any way interfering in the operations of the law enforcement agent, but we have a mandate and a duty to ensure that there is no misuse and misappropriation of public funds. So we do sympathize with him. We have taken a resolution that all other implicated officials and agencies will have to furnish us with information and they'll have to give comfort and surety to the South African citizen that indeed this matter has been dealt with and there will be progress mm -hmm. when the time is right. The report will be finished for everyone uh, to understand what has transpired with those who are mm -hmm. alleged to be involved in corruption at ESCOM. And I have to say, it, it was refreshing to see MPs really pushing hard to get answers, really holding people to account. We saw a similar sort of spirit uh, around the Tabo Besta uh, Correctional Services and Justice Committee meeting. Um, but one of the criticisms, uh, and perhaps you have this frustration, is that your own party voted down the establishment of an ad hoc committee into this ESCOM issue, which would have given you a lot more powers, would have created vast powers uh, to summon people, uh, to demand answers, to put everyone under oath. Are you a little bit frustrated with your own party that you actually uh, aren't sitting in a situation where there's this ad hoc committee where you could have really gone deep into this issue? No, let me contextualize um, the ANC voting against the establishment of an ad hoc committee. 
we're very clear and explicit to say, as things stand, there are mechanisms in place for Parliament to pursue this matter. And top of the list is SCOPA and other relevant committees, your public enterprise portfolio committees, and minerals and energy portfolio committees. The reason why Mr. Director appeared before us, it is in that context where we said we do have relevant and competent portfolio committees and standing committee to pursue this matter. ANC did not say they don't want an arrow committee and they did not want to deal with this matters. We have simply said, let this matter be dealt with by the competent and relevant committee. And that relevant committee is SCOPA. Mr. Data was able to appear before us. We are going to pursue him further. Everyone else that is implicated or has been alleged to be involved in corruption mm. in related to or matters, that particular individual will be brought before the committee for public okay, yes. to have a sense and get a clear understanding of what is happening. So, so, so basically what you're saying is, is you feel confident with the established committees already, you can get to the bottom of this. But didn't you literally butt heads on this very issue? When Dorato refused to take the oath, you couldn't compel him uh, to answer those questions. And he actually said, this isn't uh, an investigative body. You can't actually force me to do this, or, or words to that effect. Doesn't that demonstrate the limit of the committee that you were in today? N not at all. Um, at this point in time, we have not summoned him. Uh -huh. We have simply requested him to appear before us. We only take oath and affirmation when you are summoned to appear before the committee. And I've earlier indicated uh, that for his entire tenure within ESCOM, He's been cooperative with us. We've not seen any signs or indication that he is unwilling to appear before the committee. So we've opted to first invite him with the intention and the understanding that he was going to assist us in getting to the bottom of this. Now that uh, we have not found joy, we are then going to pursue all those that have been mentioned. If those that are mentioned, if the stakeholders involved are in a position to furnish us with the information which he claims he has submitted to those officials, will then pursue the matter further. But if you still feel that there is a need for him to appear again, in this case, we are then going to summon him, and he will then be obliged by the law and the constitution, which is the supreme law of the country, to take oath and affirmation and divulge any information that is required of him uh, uh, by the parliamentary structures that are in place. All right. And, and I have to say, in, in parting, I, I enjoyed watching robust line of questioning. If you ever get tired of politics, won't you just come to ENCA because we could, uh, we could do with more anchors. Uh, and, and you really <laughs> have got great <laughs> question asking skills um, onward and upward. And um, we do know that there's a lot of rot to uncover at ESCOM. You know, Media 24 um, came out with uh, what they call a dodgy dossier. This is the Fivers, George Fivers investigation, which Jacques Poe, who wrote the article, uh, said was pretty flimsy. The reality is there are, there's lots of evidence and lots of prima facie evidence stacking up uh, the Bowman's report into what is happening at ESCOM. Very final question from me. Um, do you believe that there really is so much rot to uncover uh, that, that De Reta is at least honest and very open in trying to communicate just how much of a corruption problem there still is. And the, there is no smoke without fire. We do believe that um, there are serious um, issues of concern that are going on at ESCOM, and ours is to uncover those and ensure that whoever that has stolen from the public press is brought to book. At this point in time, we do not want to rush or jump the gun and conclude that uh, the director is economical with the truth. We are going to afford him another opportunity. We always believe in the uh, the rules of natural justice and Audi Ataram Patem rule that no one should be condemned and had. We will afford him another opportunity. And this time around, we hope he's going to come to the party and work with us in order for us to fulfill our role and mandate.
All right. Thank you so much for speaking to us this evening. That is Becky Khadebe, one of the members of Parliament's Standing Committee on Public Accounts, trying in vain to get answers from Andre de Reja, saying they're going to summon him and, of course, other people to give them those answers.